Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of vlogs from Kimmel Bay Church and today we're going to be looking at the part played by the shepherds in the Christmas story. I don't usually read the whole passage but maybe today it might be nice to renew our memories and also get us in the mood for Christmas too. So we're looking at Luke chapter 2 beginning with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Then suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in a manger. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, I suppose the big question we need to ask is why the shepherds were the ones who were chosen to receive the good news about the birth of Jesus. Why not the priests, the holy people? After all, they were supposed to be the shepherds of the people. So let's begin with that question, really. Why not the priests? After all, yes, they were supposed to be looking after the flock, who were the people, but they were failing in that task. Now, in Ezekiel 34, it makes that clear. It says, Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly, and brutally, so that they were scattered because there's no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. So clearly the priests were the wrong people for the angels to speak to. So why the shepherds then? Well, shepherds were not respected at all. They were in a very lowly position compared with the priests. The priests had to stay ceremonially clean at all times, yet shepherds were constantly unclean, even dirty. They were helping sheep give birth, dealing with dead and injured sheep, so they couldn't take part in these various ceremonies. As a result, they were despised and looked down upon. Of course, one answer is that Jesus came to earth not for the wealthy, or the religious, but for these ordinary people, like the shepherds. In Luke 4, verse 18, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and the recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. Jesus made this clear later on by calling fishermen and tax collectors to be his disciples. And also, by the way, he spent his life ministering to the needs of the sick and the poor and the rejected. And God wanted to show that he cared for ordinary people. So he chose humble shepherds to be the first to receive the good news about Jesus. A third point as well is that it's possible that the shepherds also had a symbolic role too. Their job wasn't just to raise sheep for meat, 
but also the flocks around Bethlehem were also used to produce lambs for sacrifice. Lambs without spot, without blemish. And every morning and every evening, a lamb was sacrificed in the temple in Jerusalem, which is only about five miles away. And they were sacrificed to ask God's forgiveness for the sins of the people. And that, of course, was the role of the Messiah. And John the Baptist in John chapter 1 said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was that spotless Lamb of God who would die at the cross at Calvary 33 years later. I suppose that's also why the third wise man brought the gift of myrrh as a gift for the baby, to show that Jesus would die and suffer so that we could be forgiven. It was a life, I suppose, for our life. Jesus giving up his life in our place so that we could be forgiven. Now, our, our old friend Isaiah in chapter 53, verse 7, described this very clear long before Jesus' birth. He said, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Another illustration of this is Genesis chapter 22, when God provided Abraham with a male sheep to sacrifice on Mount Moriah in the place of his son Isaac. Another is in Moses' time, when the blood of a, of a lamb was sprinkled on the doorposts of the people of Israel to protect them from the angel of death that ravaged the cities of Egypt. It's an amazing thought, isn't it? The ones who raised the lambs for sacrifice could well have been the very first ones who would see Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So there we are, the role of the shepherds at the birth of Jesus. I thought it might be nice just to finish off with a quick video clip that shows what the shepherds' fields are like near Bethlehem today. Uh, I really enjoyed watching this. Hopefully you will too. So thanks for listening and have a great day. Bye for now. We can't leave Bethlehem without visiting Shepherd's Fields, where the angels loudly proclaim the birth of Christ to the shepherds who were tending their flocks by night. Here in the little Arab village of Beit Sahur, the Roman Catholic Church of the Angels sits atop the caves where the shepherds lived. The upper level, built by Antonio Barluzzi in 1950, is built in the shape of a shepherd's tent. The altar, a gift from Canadian Catholics, is supported by bronze statues of shepherds and shows a shepherd sitting at the foot of the cross. The light streaming through the ceiling reminds us of the light that shone brightly on the shepherds as the angels appeared in their glory to bring the glad tidings of Jesus' birth. Angels encircle the ceiling above the words carved in Latin, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The cave below the church has been made into a small chapel where groups can gather and celebrate the wondrous events that happened on this night. Can you imagine like being out there in the middle of the night tending your fields and all of a sudden an angel, a whole bunch of angels come to you and say the Messiah is born? But, but that's why the gospel re reminds us they were struck with fear. He said, do not be afraid. For yeah. behold, I tell you, great news, good news. It is great news. Our Messiah and Lord who brings peace in a, in a world that is still filled with fragile peace and broken promises. We need to hear this message and to, to let it become flesh in us and to become bearers of good news, yeah. bringers of peace. Yeah. That's what it's about. That's right.